I thought that he was nuts when he said I could do 25 minutes, and I'm not quite there yet, but um, I will be this year, I think. I'm 25 seconds away. I think it's doable. So I've, I've really enjoyed working with him. I've, I've become a runner. I think that's the biggest thing, as opposed to just someone who goes running kind of sometimes. I actually run. He's a perfect, relentlessly positive guy for this glass half empty kind of gal. Yeah. So guys, Lucy oh, runs her first half marathon today. What was your time? 203. Got faster and faster and faster. I ran the New York City Marathon six months ago and it was just such a great feeling to be able to finally get myself down to 315, which is what I had been aiming for. So, but it just seemed a little effort, but like I just afterwards was like, if this is how I'm feeling with the 315, I think I can go a little further, but it just scared me to look at what a pace was to run closer to a three hour marathon. I just didn't think I could do that on my own. So I started researching coaches and really seeing who, what was going on with with that on social media and just everyone was tagging McCurdy trained, McCurdy trained. I'm like, what is McCurdy trained? So I kind of looked into it and just, it was only a few days after New York that I just decided to take the plunge and get a coach for the first time. My background says I know what I'm supposed to do. My training says I know how to train athletes. But when it comes to coaching myself, even though I know what I'm supposed to do, even though I am, I've got the background and, and, the, and the decades behind it from all of my experience, I don't have the reserve. I need somebody personally to say, hey, you need to, to approach it this way. I need that objective, uh, that objective view to my own training and someone to kind of keep me in line because I can, personally, I can very easily go over the top. It's the same way that that Olympians still have coaches today. If they, these professionals still have somebody guiding their training, then why wouldn't I? I've learned a lot uh, of different styles of workouts and different styles of communication and, and different ways of handling anxieties. I think that's been the, the biggest takeaway to develop me as a coach is to try to understand what, what the athlete might be going through and then how to then shape that into uh, uh, a, a successful conversation that's gonna shape their workout or shape their race. Um, but then, then the structures of the workouts are vastly different. So learning a lot from, from the coaches that I've had and, and the coaches that are now under my employment, uh, it's been a lot of fun. What I'm looking for in my coaches and what I'm hoping to find in my own coaching is that we are listening to what our athletes are saying and we're not just telling all the time. Yeah, we wanna give them the workouts. Yes, we wanna, we wanna guide them in terms of how fast and how slow. That's very important. We have to have the knowledge and the science behind it. No, we, we, can't, we can't train one athlete who's working 50 hours a week as a nurse, uh, who also has three kids and is on the go all the time, the same way uh, that we're gonna train somebody else who is sitting at a desk for, for 30 hours a week and has a lot more free time. Uh, so understanding their, their, what's really happening in their life is really the, the key. And I think that's what's, there's too much of, well, this is what the plan says and there's not enough of, well, let's take the idea of the plan and adapt it to your actual situation. So when I'm creating workouts, I might create a, a master concept for a, a group of people inside of one specific race that week because they're all doing the same stuff or they're all running the exact same race, but then I'll manipulate the workouts to match what it is they need individually. We, we're results-based, right? Like we want, a lot of athletes want that BQ or that, that PR, and sometimes it just doesn't happen. Uh, whether it be weather related or potential related within the athlete themselves or, or just outside circumstances, life circumstances like a job loss or, or an injury. And so we have to kind of look beyond that. And so a few times over the last, especially the last 15 months since McCurdy Train has been around, it's, it's understanding how to, how to handle those situations. Uh, so I had an athlete who was running a marathon and at mile 18, six weeks ago or seven weeks ago, she actually had to drop out. She made the choice to drop out because her goal was gone of qualifying for Boston. It was, it was no longer gonna happen. She recognized it. So she ended up dropping out and, and she was crying on the phone and it was like, no, like you made the right choice. You did everything right. 
that save the rest of your season, that salvage the rest. So even though I, I understand that you're really upset right now, but everything you just did saved what it is you're, you're looking for. So in a, in a high state of anxiety, it was just trying to calm her down. And, and five weeks later, she actually ends up qualifying for the Boston Marathon. It's been 12 years since she's been attempting and two kids inside those 12 years. And now she's faster than she's ever been in her life. Uh, so it's pretty cool. PR. PR, first ever, longest run ever. I'd say that's pretty damn successful. Yeah. <laughs>